ஓகே மேம் ஸ்டார்ட் பண்ணலாம் in the name of allah the most gracious and most merciful assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh education is a is one of the most powerful things in life it allows us to find the meaning behind everything and helps improve lives in a massive way education is a process of facilitating learning or the acquisition of knowledge values beliefs habits and skills study skills include numerous techniques and skills that help in acquiring and retaining retaining information study skills might include a learner's ability to listen read understand concentrate remember and organize their learning material and manage studying time good study skills can increase your confidence competence and self esteem they can also reduce anxiety about tests and deadlines by developing effective study skills you may be able to cut down on the number of hours spent studying leaving more time for other things in your life and here we have mrs athia banzal writer teacher teacher trainer director alf academy ceo alf complementary educational services limited hong kong to give you the skills for enhanced learning mrs athia banzal had been teaching in hong kong for more than 20 years She had also been a mentor teacher for the education of the students of University of Hong Kong, Chinese University of Hong Kong, and the Education University of Hong Kong. Currently, she focuses on teaching study skills, critical thinking, and creative thinking through Alf Academy and Alf Complementary Education Services Limited, Hong Kong. Previously, she had worked with All India Radio and Doordarshan. She is the author of the novel The City from Here. Our next book is on the history of Islamophobia, which is in progress. This is Atiya's aim: is to empower students so that they become independent learners and strategic planners, capable of achieving their academic and non-academic goals. Her specific focus is on students from poor, rural, and marginalized communities who do not get the same learning opportunities which are available which are available to rich students in urban settings. In the year 20, 2018 to 2019, Mrs. Atiya Bansal offered study skills training program to the faculty of Tasim Bibi Abdul Qadir College for Women, Kilakare, and Muhammad Sadak Hamid College of Arts and Science for Women, Ramana Dabram, and the staff of Dr. Abdul Kalam International School and Research Academy, Kanyakumari. I would like to thank Madam Atiya Bansal for readily accepting our invitation to provide a platform for the students on, on these workshops. Thank you very much, Madam. I would like to place on record my gratitude to our college committee members, our president engineer Said Ahmed Sahib, our secretary engineer Khuda Mohammad Sahib, and treasurer Janab Jafar Sadiq Sahib for all their encouragement and appreciation given to us for all that we do for the betterment of the college and the students. I would like to thank all the students who are attending the today's international workshop on skills for enhanced learning. and thank all the staff of the college for their active participation and support extended to me and our technical supporters from the department of computer science this is guma and sinkaj begum and also ms rainbow from the department of mathematics thank you one and all over to mrs akia banzi thank you so much sister so we begin in the name of allah bismillah rahman rahim alhamdulillah rabbil alamin ar rahman ar rahim மாலிக்கியோமின் <laughs> and here we are this is our teaching and learning enhancement project last time a week ago we did it for teachers now we are doing it for students great idea and we are taking note taking skills and note taking strategies in this session now outline will be something like this we we'll look at current practice of note taking and what are its shortcomings then we we'll look at what are the better note taking strategies 
And then we we'll look at using notes taken to learn by heart and prepare for the test. Because notes are useless if you cannot use them for preparing for exams and tests. And in the end, I'll also introduce few tips how you can personalize your note taking. Having said that, I request all to fetch a paper, a pen or pencil for writing, a ruler, and two or three different color pens or pencils if you can find, or if you can find a marker, that would be great. Because this is note taking, so it will be a good idea to practice note taking as we go along. Okay, thank you so much. And I'm waiting for you to fetch your pens or pencils or whatever you can, and then we go ahead. Okay. So when and where do you take notes? I want someone to put something in the chat. When and where do you take notes? When and where do we take notes? I want somebody to put something in the chat. When do you take notes? Somebody needs to put something. When do you take notes? You cannot complete your university education without taking notes. When the teacher explains something in the class. Okay, great, thank you so much. That's one of the ideas. So we take notes when teacher explains like this in the class. We also make notes or take notes when we are reading books in the library or at home. Okay, so whether we say taking notes, making notes or recording notes, we mean the same thing. Now, what is the difference in taking notes in the lecture hall and while reading a book at library or, or at home? What's the difference? Or is there a difference? I want one of the students to answer. It's a good exercise, get warmed up. Something in the chat, please. Is there any difference? Is there any difference? How come it's so quiet? Nobody is answering. How can we, how can I get my message across if no one is responding? I want a response, please, please, please. Is there any difference? If you think there is no difference, just say there is no difference. But please give me second delay for that, okay. 20 second delay for that. So I'll wait 20 seconds. I'm waiting. One of the answer is no. Okay, great. At least I'm happy somebody said something. No, now let us see, is there a difference? During the lectures, you have very little time to write, so you must take notes fast. Okay, this is the difference. But when you read a textbook at home or in the library, you are not in a hurry to record the notes. So the time factor is there. In the classroom, if you spend too much time writing, the teacher may move on to point number two or three. So you have to do it very hurriedly. So actually today, what we'll be talking is mostly about taking notes during the lectures. The same strategies are applied to uh, taking notes or making notes when you are reading a textbook also. Only thing is here, you are not in a big hurry. And I want you to remember the three words. Either I say taking notes, making notes or recording notes. It's one and the same. Yeah, by taking, you have to be in a hurry. So we move. 
Now, currently, it happens with many students. If you do not do it, do it, then, I mean, I'm not saying, I'm not saying that one particular person does it, but in my long career teaching, I have seen this is what happens with most students. While taking notes, many students write every word teacher speaks. And the problem that comes with this is they often miss parts of what teacher says or explains and they become confused. This is the major problem, they become confused. Second practice that I have seen is to learn new information, many students try to memorize everything they have written in their notes or everything written in their textbooks. Now, this is a very serious problem because it gives rise to three more problems, which is since it takes long time to memorize, much of a student's time is spent in memorizing and there is not much time left for the student to understand and construct knowledge. So you may memorize, you may write, you may have pass marks, you'll never have higher marks if you are just memorizing. If you want to have higher marks, you must learn to understand and construct knowledge. Second point is that the students get no opportunity to learn higher order thinking skills like evaluating, analyzing, and creating. These three skills, cognitive skills, these are called higher order thinking skill to evaluate something, to analyze something, and to create. Create means you can do it, you can make a painting, you can write a story, you can make a, uh, create some other designs, like creating means all kind of creative work. So students, they cannot practice higher order thinking skills, so this also gets affected. Their ability to evaluate, analyze, and create, simply because they have tried to memorize everything. Third point is that, third problem is that the students do not learn to connect new information with what they already know. So they cannot construct knowledge. Knowledge is constructed brick by brick. You learn something, you connect it with something you know, learn something new, you connect. So it's like we build a house, brick by brick by brick it goes. So when they do not connect it with something they already know, they cannot construct knowledge and this information is with them, but they cannot use it. You can use information only when you have constructed knowledge from it. So what's the solution? Let's see. This gentleman, he's still alive, Cornell. His name is Walter Pock and he is from Cornell University and many of his students were failing. So he devised this system of note-taking, which is called Cornell note-taking system. And if you will check in many of the universities, uh, what we call Ivy League universities, uh, prestigious universities, you are supposed to take notes like this and they teach you. The idea is that why should we not learn to take notes like this because it's very beneficial. And what are the benefits? Number one, in this, you do not write everything. So every word you evaluate, which point to write, which example to write, and which one not to write. So you remember just now I said, these cognitive skills, evaluating. Right here, you are practicing to evaluate. And what benefit comes from evaluation is, it helps you in understanding the new information better. And it helps in keeping your notes to the point and saves you from getting confused. Thus, you save time while revising. You are not confused. So you are focusing time on learning. Third point is that Cornell note-taking incorporates, it includes higher order thinking skills that we talked about in the last slide. That is analyzing, evaluating, synthesis, or creating. It is built in the notes, uh, note-taking note strategies. And fourth, it takes you out of rote learning, that is memorizing without understanding, which is very common in Asian countries. Students don't try to understand these, just memorize long, long, long passages. Okay, so. Now these are the skills, cognitive skills. 
the they are all very complex skills. This doesn't mean remembering is useless. No, everyone is. All cognitive skills, cognitive deals with the brain. All mind skills are useful. They are very complex. But if you see, this is the hierarchy. Remembering is less complex than understanding. Understanding is less complex than applying. And applying is less complex than analyzing. And evaluate, evaluating is less complex than evaluating. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Evaluating is more complex than analyzing and creating is the most complex. This is the order. Out of these, these three are called lower order thinking skills. And these three are called higher order thinking skills. And these skills are extremely useful for people in taking decisions, in planning, in uh, putting together a program, including a program to pass your degree exams. Now, I have doubts about applying. In my opinion, in my humble opinion, applying is actually the middle level. It is not lower level because even those students or people who know remembering, who understand, they fail to apply. If it was that, Together, they will be able to apply. Many people, they understand, they remember, but they cannot apply information. Any question? Any question? Let's see if there is a question. If there's no question, we'll move forward. No questions, okay. So this is what, as I asked you, I requested you in the beginning, fetch a piece of paper. For your note taking, it will be a good idea to use paper with lines. But once again, these are your notes. If you think, no, I don't want to have lines, you are free to take a plain paper. And you have to divide the paper into three parts, okay? Don't write here anything here at the top part. And this, first draw this line, then this line. If you have a marker, draw with it. All the specifications are here, two inches, six inches, 2.5. And this total is about 11 inches. And create three areas here. If you don't have a marker, that doesn't matter. You can draw double line or make the line thick, okay? So, by drawing those two lines, you create three areas. This area is called note-taking area. This is called Q column, and this is called summary. Okay, now let's see what we do. Now, since it's a workshop, I want you to do it. I want you to take notes as we go along. So we will read this text. This text is very simple just one page and I guess most of you are uh, university students, college students. The text is very simple about living things. I kept it simple so that you know like um, college education is very specialized. Those who are doing arts are not familiar with science. Those who are familiar with science may not be familiar with arts. So I have taken something which all of you have learned in school, which is simple thing. At the top, you see this. It is taken from a book. The name of the book is here. Chapter is this one. And the subheading is characteristics of living things. These are called identity markers. These are the details about the book and the chapter. And this will be the reading text, which we will use to make notes. So we begin. First of all, you must fill the identity markers here. You know, like this one, science. We'll go here. This one is filled. So you put science from here. The science will go here. And diversity of living things. It will go here. And then name, date, page number. Why you need to put name and date? Because you will see later when we Put a, supposing you lose your notes, you drop them somewhere because we'll put them in a ring binder. 
If you lose, your name is there, you may get it back. Date will help you in keeping track of how you are learning. And page number is also very important because some notes, uh, you may write in two or three pages, four pages. So you should know if you take those notes out for revision, you should not get confused which is page number one, which is page number two. So I would suggest you also put page number. It's the subject, this is the chapter and the topic. Three things which you can write here, right here. This is the line which ends here. You can use it for identity markers. Any question before we move further? Identity markers. Any question? Identity markers. No questions? No, I'm waiting for 20 second gap. Sister Puma? No questions, ma'am. No questions, okay. We got such a lovely crowd. They don't need no taking strategies. They already do. So we move. Yes, now this, ma'am. Pardon me? So there are five steps in Cornell method of note taking. And first step is record. Means record here means write. General guidelines for recording notes or writing notes. Number one, do not write down everything your teacher says. As I told you before, evaluate which is more important and which is not so important so you can leave it. So what you can write here is write only main points and examples. Okay, main points and examples. Do not write in complete words, use abbreviations. You can write, you know, plants. I prefer to put this apostrophe. So I know something is missing here, then I remember, oh, it must be plants. Similarly, I do for animals. But you can make your own abbreviations like you make for SMS messages or WhatsApp messages, it's up to you. Or if somebody knows shorthand, you can use those message, those symbols, it's up to you. Do not write in complete sentence because we must hurry. Write phrases or parts of sentences because when you are in the classroom, you have to be quick. Do not care about the spellings and gra grammar. Nobody is going to read your notes except you. So don't worry, if spelling is wrong, let it be wrong, you continue, don't lose your speed. You can use diagrams, mind maps, equations, and drawings in your notes. And use this ditto sign, do not write everything again and again and again and waste. And then these are also important. If you cannot do these points, when you are taking notes, you can do it very roughly, but when you go home, you must tidy up your notes and make sure if you take different color pens to write different points, you can clearly see them. As soon as you look at it, you know. And skip a line between two ideas, because if there is a large gap, you will know the new point starts here and leave two or three lines between two subtopics. In the university, all your topics are very complicated. It is not possible that the chapter starts and ends with no subtopics. There will be subtopics, so leave two or three lines. The idea is that the moment you look at it, you know how many points are there. And write clearly so that you can easily read. In the classroom, it will not be possible, but. Make it a habit when you go home, clean your notes. And after making notes, read them. If some points are not clear, rewrite and make them clear. These are general guidelines. Now, these particular points, all these points, they will help you so that you can write quickly, you do not lose attention from lesson. 
uh, and you can save time and you can reduce information to what is absolutely necessary to learn. And ideally one hour lecture should be condensed on one page, A4 page. And these points, these will help you in revising. You can read your notes easily. Okay, so it is the same reading text. Let me show you this one. The same reading text, we'll go paragraph by paragraph and make notes. We have recorded the identity markers. Now we come down to these three paragraphs. Okay, how do we know that something is a living or a non-living thing? A robot may look like a 10 year, 10 years old girl, speak like a girl, may read a book or switch on and switch off lights or sing songs, but this doesn't make it a girl. Then what is it that makes a girl a living thing and a robot a non-living thing? It is simply introduction. Do you think you need to take a note here? Since let's say a primary two child may need, primary four child may need, you don't need to note down anything here. In science, living things are called organisms. Living organisms are made of cells, plants, animals, fungi, bacteria, and virus are living things. In fact, scientists include human beings among animals. Oh, oh. So, if you are familiar with word organisms, you don't need to write, need, you don't need to take note of it. But if you are not familiar, you may make your note living things organisms. But all organisms do not look the same or have same size and shape. Whales are huge and ants are tiny. Bacteria, fungi and viruses are so small that we cannot even see them without a microscope. Yet they are living organisms. Why? This why gives you an indication that now reasons are coming and probably there will be multiple reasons. So you remember I told you, you need to use those short forms and you can make your own short form. You don't have to make it the way I make it. And for making short, short form, these are the uh, points that you need to remember. You have already filled up this point. You write your examples here, examples of living things. You remember I said in the note taking area, you can write main points and examples, two things. So examples of living things, plants, animals, fungi, bacteria, virus. If somebody does not remember organism, they can also include that another point. Now see what happens. We continue reading and making notes. So living things have seven characteristics. If something has only one or two of these characteristics, it doesn't become a living thing. These characteristics are number one, movement. All living things can move. We can see people and animal move. Even very small insects move. But how do plants move? The petals of a flower open and it blooms. So there is some movement in the plants. The flower blooms. And green leaves, two examples of movement. Green leaves turn towards the sun. These are the general rules for making notes. And I'm sure you'll be making notes here in your note taking area. Then comes next point, reproduction. All organisms, living things, produce organisms like themselves. So this is the main point. What is the example? A cow produces a calf. A monkey produces a baby monkey. A mango seed produces a mango tree. And human beings produce babies. So you can continue making your notes. This point sensitivity. Sensitivity is how we respond to atmosphere around us. So living things must know what is going on around them. This is necessary to save their life. For example, if suddenly I see 
there is fire outside my window. I must know how to save myself. So my seeing, I will respond by running away from here. This is called sensitivity. When a rat sees a cat, it runs away because it knows cat may eat it. Now, green plants grow towards light. They know it is the only way they can make food and grow big. So let us see how we can take notes about it. This was our living things, organism cells, one point. Not necessary that everybody will write this. Those who know, they don't need to put examples of living things. That was one point, plants, fungi, bacteria, animals. Now we have come down to characteristics of living things. Now you will see, I have here, I have actually put down almost the whole word. I have not tried to cut it down because I'm teaching online. I do not want you to get confused. The, you should know the word, but I expect you to shorten the word according to your choice. For example, this cow, calf, why should we shorten it? It's already a very short, short word. But big, big words, you can shorten them. Okay, I'll leave it on the screen for 30 seconds. And I want you to complete making notes. Characteristics of living things. We have looked at three characteristics, one, two, three. I expect you to make notes as you would make in your classroom, in your lecture hall. Just 30 seconds, okay? Done? Okay, so we move further. There are four more. Three we have covered, three characteristics. Four more characteristics are there. And once again, I'll put the general rule here for you. They are here so that you can continue making your notes. Growth. So what is growth? When living things are born, they are small. Later they grow bigger in size by making new cells. That's the point. You grow by making new cells. A baby grows into an adult and a seed grows into a tree. Example. Main point, example. Respiration. What is respiration? Living things take in oxygen from the air to burn the food. When food is burned, you must have seen in your own kitchen sometimes when your mom is doing something, if food is burned, it releases heat and light. Similarly, not light, but when food is burned inside our body, it releases energy and that energy is very useful for us. We use it to grow, to move and to repair our body cells. When we are injured or something has happened, so respiration is one of the characteristics of living things. Respiration means taking in oxygen to burn the food. And when food is burned, the energy is released. We need that release energy to grow, to move, and to repair our body cells. Excretion. The body of living organisms can excrete, means throw out the waste material and harmful substances, including so much of, by chance, if you take something poisonous, it will be thrown out. So examples of waste material are carbon dioxide, urine, and feces. Nutrition is another important characteristics of living things. Living things need to take in nutrient to keep alive. These nutrients are used to make, see, main point, again, you get examples. Nutrients are used to make new cells for the body to grow, which we have talked here just now, to move around and to repair damaged cells. Animals do this by eating other plants and animals. Do this, this means what? 
taking nutrition. Animals do this by eating other animals and plants, they get energy. Plants take in their food and water from the soil. Only green plants make their own food using sunlight. Here it becomes a little different because we also eat plants and animals. There are many people who are purely vegetarian. They eat only plants. And actually it is funny because when you talk to Japanese people, they laugh at me. They say, you are Indian and you say milk is vegetarian. Milk is not vegetarian. Milk is animal product. So Japanese consider milk also animal product. If they are vegetarian, they don't even take milk or cheese or yogurt. Different concepts. But if you look at our teeth, how they are made, our teeth are designed to eat plants and animals both. Okay, now I want you to complete your notes. Here, I'm not going to write anything. I'll give you one minute. I want you to complete your notes. Okay, less than one minute you need, just four points there, four points here. Please make notes because I would ask you to show me, switch on your camera and show me your notes. So I want you to take notes. Finished? Finished? Sister Puma, any response? Yes, ma'am. Finished. Okay, thank yes, you. Very good. Very good. So we move. I have made notes like this. But that doesn't mean you must copy my notes. The whole idea of Cornell note taking is you must stop copying somebody else and be independent. Okay. But if you want, we can say, okay, grow, GRO is growth. New cells so examples are seeds, they grow into tree, baby grows into adult. Uh, rest is respiration. We need it to burn food, get energy. Get energy for what? Grow, move, repair injured parts. EXC is excretion to throw out harmful substances and waste material. Examples are carbon dioxide, urine feces. Nutrition is to grow, move, repair injured parts. And animals eat food, plants take nutrition from soil and water, only green plants make their own food, which is actually starch. So if you see the whole one page text has covered two points mainly, examples of living organisms and characteristics of living things or living organisms. This is how you need to distill the text in two points. So by now we made three parts. By drawing two lines, we made three parts. We have only filled up note taking area. Between two points, draw a line. If you have different color pens, use different color pens. Once again, you will see here, I have put mostly uh, complete words. That is because I'm teaching online. So if I put shortened things, although they are here, like GR is uh, green plants, GR is grow towards, I kept it understandable so that you can read it on your screen and you do not get confused. So note taking area is done. Every time when you are making notes, this thing you must complete when you are sitting there in your classroom lecture hall. You do not need to fill these. 
if you are attending a lecture. When you go home, you can do that. But this one must be completed when you are learning. And we'll always go in this order. First, we'll complete note-taking area, then we'll complete Q column, and then we'll go to summary. So now we come to step two. It is called reduce. Now we have made those new notes here. We are, you remember one page we have brought it down to only a few points. And so we have already reduced information. Now we are going to reduce it further in Q column. Why? Because you have loads of things to understand and learn. So we are trying to reduce this information again and how we will do it. There is a way to reduce your notes. What we'll do is we'll make a question. We will make a question and we will write it in the Q column. And when you look at that question, you will remember all that you have written down in the note taking area. What is the procedure? Read your notes and think of a question for each point in answer to which you can write what you have written in the note taking area. How to make questions? These are the rules. Make questions that can be answered using notes you have made. Don't expect something which is not in the notes. Your question should be such, when you answer that question, you should remember what you have written down in the note taking area. Use your own words. <coughs> Excuse me. Use your own words to make question. This is very useful because what happens is if the same syllabus is taught one year, next year, third year, the teachers, what they do is they may be asking the same question, same question, but they use, they use different words. So if you learn to make a question using your own words, you will be actually thinking like your teachers. And that will always help you in learning better. Write questions directly across the answer. Don't write haphazard. We'll see it in a minute. Do not make questions that can be answered in one word, yes or no. These are useless questions. Although I keep asking yes or no, because I'm so far away, thousands of kilometers away from you. Questions from past tests and exam papers on the same topic can be used. But these questions must be written in your own handwriting, in your own words. So when you look at past exam papers, test papers, to make questions, you are actually already starting to prepare for your tests and exams. So naturally, you will do better. Try to make questions difficult so that you can prepare yourself for the exams. And draw a line to separate questions as we have separated in the note taking area and use different color pens to write different questions so that we can see it easily. If you wish, depending on the subject also and your personal choice, you can put diagrams in place of questions in the Q column. In science subjects, it's very useful. You can put examples in the Q column. Uh, if you are learning grammar, or you can put main themes in your own words. Don't forget this word, three words, your own words. If it is, uh, if you are learning history or liberal studies. Now, all this you have done here, it will help you in learning without memorizing. So your tested exam preparation will begin right when you are making notes. And these things, what I told you, you can, you have alternatives. These are to help you personalize your notes. Do what you like, but keep in mind that your aim is to do extremely well. You want to do it well, you want to learn well. Whatever suits you, you can do. 
So your notes may look like this. This is the note taking area. You have put notes here and you made two questions here. Now this person made, what are the examples of living organisms? Which is fine. Again, drew a line, just like this. And for these, the person made another question. How do you know if something is a living organism? So we know there are, if something has all seven characteristics, it's a living thing. Any question about Q column? Any question about Q column? There is a question I see. This is Anu Anu. And she's asking, I have a question, how to improve handwriting while taking notes? Actually, I know you don't need to improve your handwriting while taking notes. When you are making final notes at home, you are cleaning it. That is the time you practice good handwriting. Not while taking notes, because you are writing, you will read. So don't worry about handwriting there. Any question? Sister Buma, I think. Not no yet, ma'am. We okay. posted the questions about Q column, but yeah. uh, still no, no questions. Yeah, I can see. Okay, so let's move forward. We come to the third part, that is summary. These are the rules right on every page, right? If you want, you can write summary on all pages. If you do not want, you can write at the end of the chapter or at the end of a section. There is no fixed rules. Think what helps you learn best and you practice that. But making a summary is compulsory. Write summary in only three or four complete sentences. Now we come to complete sentences. Write in your own words, that emphasis in your own words. You are college students. You must know how to write in your own words. Otherwise you can be accused of plagiarism. And this will help you in writing your tests and exams and assignments. Now, summary must have only the main points, main ideas. Don't put any details and no examples. In the summary, no example. Summary must include what you have learned. And summary by connecting newly learned information with something you already know. This will help you in remembering this new information for a longer time. And actually tomorrow when we do memory techniques, you'll realize how useful this idea is to remember. Now summarizing, because we are, we are making a summary, summarizing is a higher order thinking skill. It will help you learn better. For literature, what the students can do is Instead of writing a summary, they can write a reflection on the poem or novel they have read. If it is about a novel or a story, do not retell, do not tell the story all over again. Write your reflection, what you liked in it, what you didn't like in it, what you would like to see differently. Or about how the author is, writer is trying to convey his or her message. And after Writing summary, keep it clean. If some words are not clear, you can make them clear. You rewrite. So for this seven characteristics of living things, let us see summary will be something like this. All organisms are made of cells. They have seven characteristics. These are movement, reproduction, sensitivity, growth, respiration, excretion, and nutrition. If something doesn't show even one of these seven characteristics, it cannot be a living organism. Though both car and human beings, now you see connecting with something you know. So the student already knows that car is, not, is a non-living thing. Though both car and human beings can move from one place to another, human beings are living things and car is a non-living thing. So actually here in three sentences, the student has put the entire idea, what 
he or she has read and here they have connected it and to remember these these processes movement reproduction sensitivity sensitivity, sensitivity they have put mrs gren again tomorrow we'll talk about it if the student remembers mrs gren will remember all these seven characteristics m for movement r can be reproduction or respiration and s for sensitivity g for growth r for again respiration or reproduction and e for excretion and n for nutrient so the student has also incorporated the uh, memory technique here to remember here you can see it very clearly. Seven characteristics of living thing are here. And if something doesn't show, this is what the student has learned at this point. If something doesn't show even one of these seven characteristics, it cannot be a living organism. This is from the text, notes from the text. This is what the student has learned. And this is what the student has connected with information that the student had already had. Another, so this is one idea. Another idea is this was a very popular serial, TV serial, Small Wonders. And these two girls, though they look like girls, this is a girl and this is a robot. It is available on YouTube. If you want, you can watch it. It's hilarious, very, very funny because she's a robot. She's so fast. And this human being teaches her, you know, how to throw tantrums, how to demand things. But if you do not know it already, no, don't connect. You have to connect information, new information, with something you already know. Okay? Now, biggest advantage of writing summary is you can read summaries of your entire syllabus the night before exam before going to bed in one hour or so. Just read summary, 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 and you will refresh your memory. So inshallah, when you go for exam or test next morning, you'll do it very well. Now we come to third step, recite or recall. Now this step is to learn by heart. How do we learn? We have made, until now we made notes. Now we are trying to learn. So you can see here, take a paper, take a A4 paper or whatever and hide your notes. Leave your questions clear. And what you can do is reading, reading your notes, read your notes two or three times. You have a choice. You can read quietly or aloud. Then cover your notes. Read the question in Q column aloud and answer it aloud. This will help you in improving your pronunciation also. But you should not do it word by, when you answer it, do not try to answer it word by word from the notes. Again, try to answer in your own words. Lift the sheet to check if you remember correctly or you have forgotten. If you haven't forgotten anything, continue. Next question. If you have forgotten, Remove this paper, read your notes again two or three times, read the question, hide the answers in your own words, speaking aloud, you answer it. Now, why this is so important in learning? Because checking your answer for mistakes is a very good exercise. Why? Because when your teacher finds your mistakes, you lose marks. When you find your mistakes, you actually correct it and you gain marks. So why you want to lose marks? This stage is called step three, recite or recall. And this is for learning your notes by heart. Do you think I should give you at least one minute to do that? Do you want to try it? Ma'am? A question from Aisha Sutika. Uh -huh. How to draw at note taking? I think she asked how to draw a diagram 
if it is necessary while taking notes. Simplify it. You are the best judge how you would drop. See, when, like, I don't know whether they still ask you to do. We used to have, when I was doing MSc in zoology, we had to draw slides. And that used to be very fast within a minute, you know, you see, identify the slide and you uh, make the diagram. So making diagram takes practice, that's all. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. I want any, anybody who, who's trying, I hope you are trying because I can't see anyone. Has anyone tried I want yes or no? Has anyone tried? Hide your notes, read them aloud, check your answers. If you have learned, move on. Has anyone tried? Yes, ma'am, they are taking the notes. And anyone tried this step, recite or recall? Because I want you to practice it now so that when you are free, nobody's there. Even then you can do it. And now if you have any confusion, you can ask me. I'm here to help you. Okay. Okay. So if that, so we come to the fourth step. That is called reflect. Now reflection is a key to memory. If you reflect on something, you remember it long term. The purpose of this step, fourth step, fourth step is to consciously recognize the progression of information within the chapter or topic. It may look like a big word, but it's not a big word. So what you should do is keep your notes away now and quietly, silently think. Think about what? Everything you have written in the note-taking area, you call them ancillary. Quietly think, reflect. You also think about the organization of all the notes and questions in the Q column. For example, how the chapter is structured, what was in the introduction, how the arguments or ideas were developed, and what conclusions were made. If Also think if there is a relationship between and among various ideas and inferences or conclusions. Or what is the significance of facts which you have just learned? Is it really useful? Is it going to help me or not? Are these facts based on anything that you already know or you have already read about? Again, you are attaching new information to something you already know, so you will remember it long time. This is to be done silently. Just take one minute or two minutes. If you want, close your eyes and think about all these points. Anybody wants to do it now? Let's take 30 seconds, you can do it. Okay, so before we move on to the last part, I want to tell you this is very important. If you miss a lesson or part of a lesson at school or college, before going home, you can look at your friend's notes and you want, you can copy them by hand because writing always helps in learning, understanding better in your notebook. Don't try to take, a, take out your mobile and take a photo and go home. Taking a photo does not help you in learning or remembering. Now we come to the last stage that is review. So every week, spend five to 10 minutes every week to review. Review means revise your notes until you learn them by heart. And how you will revise? You will revise same, read your notes, hide your notes, read the question, 
answer the question. And after that, read your summary, close your notes away, keep them away, and then you reflect how the information was organized. Okay, this is the same thing. You read one or two times. And when you are revising your notes, you are free to highlight or underline. And when after one or two times, if they become messy, you make a fresh copy of the notes and file them. And filing is also very important in this kind of notes. Put your notes in the ring binder, ring binders like this. So that if they become, uh, you underline them and they become messy, you can take them out, make a fresh copy and put it in order. If you have a normal book-like thing, you cannot put your notes. If you have something like this, in, you, in this you cannot change the sequence of your notes. Here you can put them exactly where they were. So put them in a ring binder. And this is from what I earlier did. I taught the same note taking to some students here. And this is what I got. This is, see, when you are learning something new, it always happens. So he had to cross out so many things, he or she, and then it becomes messy, but doesn't matter. He has put something here, reproduction and this thing, put a question also, this one and this living seven cells, seven characteristics it should be, there is some kind of summary. And this is another one has made. So what I'm trying to say is, See, there is a diagram, some growth from zero to this and minus and this finished until death put everything. What I'm trying to say is it is up to you how you want to use diagrams and things like that because notes are for you. You alone know what helps you learn better, what doesn't help you learn. So let us sum up. If I want to put all that chapter on note taking. It will be something like this in the note taking area. These were the two questions we made. And this is the summary. These were from the text notes we made. This was something that you have learned while making notes, while uh, during the le lesson or lecture. And this is something to connect new information with the old, something that you already know, so that you remember it long time. So advantages of Cornell note taking are, it can be personalized. It promotes independent learning. So you'll not be dependent on your teachers or somebody else. You can, if you practice, you can do it very easily. It will discourage you from mindless memorization and it will help you, it will, encourage you, inspire you to understand and do better. Cornell notes, they integrate higher order thinking skills like analyzing, evaluating, summarizing into the note taking system itself. It integrates memory techniques, connecting new information with something already know already in the note taking. And it is a multi-sensor learning. Means you listen in the uh, classroom, you are seeing and listening and learning. So when you are writing notes, you are using three. You are learning as a visual learner. You see and learn. You are learning as an auditory learner, means you hear and learn. And when you are taking notes, you are also learning as a kinesthetic learner. That is called multisensor learner. So you become a multi-sensory learner. If you are learning in three ways, one lesson, I'm sure you will learn it very well. Here are some other examples. This one has shown some characteristics here. Look at this. This is student chose to write comments here. And here I want to tell you, this is a wrong thing. This, the student has not learned in the lesson. Don't waste time. Nobody asked him to write this. It was all about seven characteristics. 
he had put something irrelevant. This one has put so many lines here to show relationships and use diagrams, you know. And he has also put here Mrs. Grimm. Another idea. Another one has done it like this. This one has forgotten to put all the uh, identity markers, but the person has definitely taken some interest in making notes. If you take more interest in making notes, you learn better. That's it from me. Any question you want, I'm happy to answer. Any question, please. Uh, still no, no questions, but they are greeting. Very useful session, informative session, excellent session. <laughs> and it is very useful to us. These are the reply. Yes, all teachers know this is very useful for the students. And uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, our students are uh, usually taking uh, notes while uh, we are teaching. Uh, yeah. But now uh, they know how to do it in a proper manner. Yes, that is because you saw we have gone through it and we realized that uh, the students will get out of the habit of memorizing, you know, and it will be so useful for them. They can do research, they can do some creative work. I mean, it, I, I really love it. And actually, I have taught this note taking to eight year old children, nine year old children, they can do it. So I'm sure you can do it much better than other people. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Surely. Only trick, only thing to remember is what you have learned today. If you do not practice, you will forget everything. All skills you can learn by practice. So keep yes, practice. Practice make a man better. Yes, makes a man perfect. So perfect. Without without practice, you will lose all that one hour we learned here, and then you will think, no, I never learned. So in the beginning, I tell you, writing the shorthand also becomes very difficult because we are so used to writing in the full. But if you want to write in full, good. But don't write complete sentence. Don't write grammar correct. Don't write, you know, like uh, uh, you are going to, don't worry about your handwriting. Your notes are for you to read. Nobody else's business how you write. Okay, then. If there is no question, should we take leave? Yes, ma'am. Uh, no questions. Over to Anna for a vote of thanks. Anna? Yes, ma'am. Am I audible? Yes, uh, yes ma'am. The capacity to learn is a gift. The ability to learn is a skill. The willingness to learn is a choice. Honorable dignitaries, distinguished guests, respected principal, and dear participants. On behalf of Anihadra Women's College, it is my immense pleasure and privilege to propose the vote of thanks on this webinar session. With today's digitally savvy and social media oriented generation, there is a dire need for skill-based learning methodology. It is evident that skill-based learning helps in enhancing strengths and goals to elevate one's life. First of all, let me start by glorifying the Almighty for making today's session a resounding success. First and foremost, I would like to express my deep gratitude and sincere thanks to our special guest speaker, Atiyah Bansal, Director, Aleph Academy, CEO, Aleph Complementary Educational Services Limited, Hong Kong, who spared her precious time in spite of a busy schedule on her extremely relevant address on skills for enhanced learning. <laughs> she rightly talked about note-taking strategies. Her speech really opened our minds, paving easier and methodical ways to enhance our learning skills. Thank you, ma'am. I also express my heartfelt thanks 
to our college president, Engineer SK Sayyid Ahmed Sir, Secretary, Engineer SK Khuda Muhammad Sir, and Treasurer, Jaffa Sadiq Sir, for their support and commitment. I would further extend a hearty thank to our principal, Dr. K. Raja Fatima Ma'am, for her able guidance. Thank you, ma'am, for your unstinted support. My heartfelt thanks to the HOD of our English department, Dr. Kalam ma'am, and all the other staff members for their unfaltering support in making today's webinar session a grand success. Last but not the least, I thank all the participants who chose to be on this online webinar and attended it with great enthusiasm and made it a successful event. I thank you all once again. Have a wonderful day ahead. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, thank you, Anna. Leave. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Assalamu alaikum, rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Inshallah, we'll meet tomorrow. We'll meet yes, tomorrow. And everybody must remember to bring a paper and pen. Must take notes tomorrow too. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam.